Hello and welcome back to the channel. I wanted to be able to go live with you guys today and kind of talk through my process of how I finish my coasters once they're done and then answer potentially any questions that you may have as far as how do I do this process, um, what are the materials I use, how do I mix my paints and whatnot. I wanted to basically be able to give you like a, a live q and I haven't gone live for quite a long time and I wanted to be able to interact with you guys on a more personal level like this. So that is what we're doing today. Today I've got about 28 sets of coasters and I kind of figured if I'm going to be doing them anyway, then I might as well be doing them with you lovely people as well and potentially answering any kind of questions that you guys have. So with that, we're gonna get into it. So this is a finished set. They have cork backing on the back. These were all mica pigments. Hi Sherry's Life, thank you so much. So these were all mica pigments. I've gotten a lot of questions as far as how I mix my mica pigments. Now I'm not an expert, but I also was trying to figure out how to do it. Um, it wasn't a very straightforward process for me to figure it out. There's not a lot of references. So, hey, Robin, how's it going? I love, don't surrender. Make a fire like wood, looking one for my husband. I definitely can, Robin, for sure. Um, these are the closest thing that some people have told me look like flames, but it's not the right colors. It's gold, bronze, and silvers. Um, so, back onto that question that I've been asked. I think Scott has asked me that question a few times. I pretty much take a cup. I have a bunch of different uh, pigments. Maybe take less than a gram. I use the tip of the popsicle stick to put it in here. And then I've been mixing this Josonio gloss varnish or a small amount of the Liquitex Basics with it and stirring it really gently. And that's something you need to be careful about. Uh, you definitely wanna be wearing a mask if you are gonna be working with mica pigments because if you start inhaling those substances, then it can wreak havoc on your lungs and whatnot. So, but as far as mixing them, I suggest you mix them in a very small amount in a cup separate from your, your medium, whatever it may be and making sure all the powder fully dilutes before you mix it with your paints. So I hope that answers the question. Um, so basically I'm gonna be finishing these coasters and just giving you like a, a look as, as far as what they look like when they're finished. I have a whole bunch that I still have the tape on the back and I need to remove the tape and put the backing on and do the finishing touches on. So I have a whole bunch of different color palettes. Some red, this looks more like Fire Robin. And then I have some blues with golds too. Some pretty brilliant purples. Let me grab these from over here. Purples, greens, some uh, more reds. So we got some red and a whole set of these greens. Yeah, you definitely should wear a mask for sure if you're going to mix them. Because have you ever mixed them before? Because I know when I first started mixing them, I didn't know anything about the mask either. Um, oh, thank you, Sherry. I didn't know anything about the mask either. And I was mixing it like I would typically mix my paints, like really fast. And some of the powder shot into my face. <laughs> and I was like, okay, this can't be good. And then I looked it up. Hi, Michelle. How's it going? Yeah, I looked it up and I figured that, or I found out that it's, once it gets in your lungs, it never really goes away. So, I figured I would pass that on to y'all. So, this stream is not only about me finishing coasters, only once and then I'd, then I'd use some of the primary elements twice. Yeah, I didn't know anything about it until I recently started getting into these micas and yeah, they're, they're pretty hazardous if you end up breathing them in. So definitely wear a mask for that. So this process is kind of, this is not the fun part. 
but it's also a part that not very many people were talking about. When I tried to figure it out for myself, is how to uh, finish these coasters. So the resin is super hard right now. But what you wanna do if you're planning on resining anything, if I can even get this tape off, it's being very uncooperative. Uh, you always wanna put tape on your back because then it allows you to do just like I did. You peel the hardened resin off and then there's always these drips. And if you don't put tape, you have asthma and don't need, yeah, definitely. Oh, hey, Peggy, how you doing? Today, yeah, today we're not doing a pour and spin. Today we're doing kind of a how to finish your coasters when they're done, because I have 28 sets that I need to finish. I haven't done anything live in a while, and I wanted to do a live stream and be able to interact with you guys and possibly answer any questions you guys have as far as anything, really. So I figured I would do this while I'm interacting with all you lovely human beings. But yeah, before you, you uh, paint your tiles, super beneficial for you to put tape on the back because then it allows the resin somewhere to come up. It doesn't stick to the back because these little drips, they're rock hard. And if you didn't have tape on the back and you wanted to remove those, you would have to either sand them down or heat them up and try to use a razor and cut them off when they're soft. But when you do that, if you heat up the back, you're also heating up the front. And if you're grabbing the resin too hard, hey Paula, how you doing? If you grab the resin too hard, you're gonna start leaving your fingerprints in it, especially when it when you heat it up and make it soft again. So right now I'm struggling with the tape. This is something I'm normally doing off camera. But I wanted to involve you guys in the process. All right, so See how the tape pulled away? And now I can just break that little nib off and it's no longer stuck. If you didn't have tape on there, it makes it so they, they don't come off. They're just attached. Oh, these bronze and gold? Yeah, these things came out a lot better than I thought they were gonna come out. So that's a whole set, plus the hot plate or the trevet. There's a few sets that I've done all four coasters in a, in a hot plate, kind of like an homage to what I've seen Julie Cutts doing on her channel. Because some of the stuff she does on her channel is freaking amazing. Amazing. Oh, you love resining, Paula? I don't particularly like to resin, but... I have started and tried to be more open-minded to it here recently because it stuff's beautiful. And it definitely adds a nice, I mean, they make great gifts for the holidays. Oh, the gold, the red, and the bronze? That one? Thank you, Paula. I appreciate it. Yeah, I even had a, a young man helping me make coasters a couple weeks back. And they actually ended up really cool. I ended up resonating them. They're very, very abstract. Here, I'll grab some of them so you guys can see it. Uh, heat safe resin do I use? I use um, stone coat resin because it is specifically heat resistant. It's made for countertops and whatnot. Oh, Paula, they will. But Karen, yeah, that's the kind of resin that I'm using for these because I want people to be able to set coffee cups on them and they don't melt the resin. Oh, thanks, Sherry. I appreciate it. All right. Okay, I'll add you on Facebook, Robin. Just, uh, just... I, should, I probably shouldn't say this on a live stream, but Johnny Morrison, uh, I'm all over a lot of the art groups posting my stuff. Uh, does the resin soften when using the tile as a hot trevet? And after you let it cure, it won't soften again, no. So, but if you, like let's say I resin these a week ago and like I just poured the wet resin a week ago and somebody tried to set like a hot plate on these right now, 
yes, it would leave a ring, it would melt. So, but you have to give it the full time to cure. Each resin is different. Stone Coat recommends you give it 30 days to fully cure before using it as any kind of heat. Uh, Michelle Wilkins asks, do I cut my own cork or do I order sizes that were already cut? I order the sizes that were already cut. Like these were for the big treves. And then I have a small four pack. Hold on one second, let me go grab it. <clears throat> I love interacting with you guys like this. Y'all make this whole process so much more fun. All right. And then I get those off Amazon. They're just uh, four by four cork packs that, you know, it has a, the whole back is adhesive. It sticks straight to it. So that's what I put on my, uh, the backs of these, these tiles here. Yeah, absolutely. What is the heat resistance for stone coat? Let me read it real quick. I don't want to lie to you. Let me see. Do, do, do. You all can read with me just in case I'm missing it. Because I might be missing it. I think it's like 400 degrees or something. Hmm. I'm not seeing it on there. It says to heat the resin, like to mix it between 65 and 80 degrees. So if you're using this outside, you'd want to bring it inside or put it in a heat bath. Oh, fully cured seven days, not 30. No, oh, it can take up to 30 days to reach match maximum durability, heat, and scratch resistance. Mm. But I think, I want to say it's like 400 degrees. Yes, I do. I mix part A and part B together for about five minutes, and I pour it into a clean container. Yeah, the four inch squares have an adhesive on the back. Yeah, there, hold on, there's an adhesive on the back. If I miss anybody's question, I do apologize, but I'm trying to make sure that I get everybody's. All right, let me see if I can get it for you, goodness. All right, yeah, the whole back is adhesive, so that's how they stick. And from my experience, the it doesn't peel off. Even when it gets wet, it still stays in place. No, Robin, definitely not. Hey, Angela, how's it going? No, you, nobody needs to shut up. Questions are questions. I want, that's, the, that's part of this whole live stream. Because I get so many questions, I can't quite answer them all. And I want to be able to answer them for everybody. All right, so I'm just peeling this tape off the back and now you can see instead of it looking all crazy with those drips see here's the mistake I made right I did not tape this so this is gonna be so hard to use a drill method to mix and spread with a trowel oh no 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 I don't uh, I mix them in little <clears throat> clear cups so I'll measure out however much resin I want to use normally it's like, I think it's eight ounces of part A, eight ounces of part B. Mix them thoroughly, pour them out of this cup into a brand new cup and mix that again. And then I pretty much just pour drips into the center of each tile and then spread it with my fingers with gloves on. Yeah, if, the corks, if they don't adhere well, you could definitely add some glue to the back. You use spray adhesive rod? Yeah, the spray adhesive will work just fine too. So this is my mistake, right? I love this coast, or this treve, and it's a part of a set. But what I'm gonna have to do now is heat this up and try to cut these off because now they are hard as a rock and they're part of the tile. So unfortunately, I didn't think that through. On, see, on most of them I did, but on that one I just realized that I didn't. So that's one more headache and hassle that I'm gonna have to deal with later on. But then normally you still get a little bit on the, the edge, the resin on there. Now, if I was to try to take this and peel it all the way off, there's a chance that I could damage the side of the, the trevet. See how it's lifting? So these little pieces like this, I'll just take a razor and trim them off. 
So I'll just take a razor and just cut that piece of resin so I don't damage the side of the tile or the side of the tile. I'm trying to show you guys and do things at the same time. <clears throat> so do you guys have any other questions? I would love to answer your questions. How's everybody doing? What part of the world do you live in? That's crazy. Uh, can you use a heat gun on resin? Yes, an I gun solely when I'm doing my resin to pop the bubbles. So I, I use this heat gun here. It's got paint all over it because I just grab it whenever I'm painting. But yeah, on resin, I use the heat gun primarily to pop the bubbles for sure. So a six-year-old young man painted these and I love them. He had so much fun though. He had such a great time. And some of them are metallic, which is cool. But yeah, I pretty much just mixed some paint up with some Floetrol and stacked some coasters up and told them to... Oh. Hi, Karen from South Carolina. You think she's saying... You think they're saying to take the resin off the bottom? Yes, you can use a heat gun to do that too. You know, heat up these little spots. I'll use the one that I messed up. So yeah, you can use a heat gun, but like I was saying earlier in the video, right? What you do to the back of the coaster, or treve, is going to happen to the front too. So if you're softening the resin here, I'm also softening it here. So you just have to, if you heat it up, be very careful that you're not pinching that area of the tile because then you're going to leave an indent on the front. Uh, this, these are all acrylic. These are blooms. So these are just the Shelly Art bloom pours with acrylic paint. So these start off as one of these four by four ceramic tiles that I get from Lowe's for, for like 15 cents each. I buy a huge box of them. I take, I put tape on the back and then I'll do my bloom pour over the top, let them dry. And then after they're dry, I'll clean any of that Minwax because I use Minwax in my blooms. I'll clean the oils off with uh, baby wipes. I have a solution of rubbing alcohol and water that I use to clean the oils out. And then finally, I use Windex and water. Yeah, I love Lowe's too. Hey, Renee from Colorado. Hey, acrylic heart. Come on me, how you doing? It's great to see you here. Um, so like I was saying, I basically do a bloom, I clean the oils off, and then I apply a top coat so that the resin doesn't get repelled from anything. If there are like residual oils. And my top coat I actually learned from uh, Olga Sobi from Smart Art Materials. And she uses this Liquitex gloss gel. She'll take 50% this, 50% water, and make a liquid out of it. Kind of a, a very fluid paste. And she paints over the top. So that's what I used to seal it before I resin. And then after that's dried, give it about a day, come back, and then I stack all these up on the table and pour resin over them and put them in my drying rack that's over there. And let them sit there for about 7 days, 14 days until they're cured. <clears throat> yeah, true. That's true, Robin. You made a clock with strictly resin and pigments. That is That sounds challenging. I'm very intimidated to work with resin. I'll work with it as far as like these are concerned, but like I've made mistakes before where I wasn't sure what the working time of the resin was, so I had all my resin in here, and then, you know, I get sidetracked because squirrels and, you know, bright objects draw my attention. I'm very scatterbrained at times. <laughs> I, like, left this thing sitting here for, like, I think 15, 20 minutes, and I came back, and I went to try to stir it with a stir stick, and it was, it was like a rock, so all the resin was ruined. But, yeah, I mean, I, I'm dabbling with resin here and there. I'll put resin on tiles and stuff like that, and I feel comfortable with that now. So I'll, I'll broaden my horizons more as time goes by, I'm sure. Yeah, Sherry. It was interesting for sure. It definitely was. 
Alright. But yeah, that top coat thing really helps out. I've been doing it also with my acrylic pores because uh, dimethicone in that coconut oil hair serum is really, really difficult to clean it all out. So I'll also, I'll, I'll do my cleaning process on my paintings and whatnot before I varnish, but I'll also uh, put a top coat on it just, just to be safe and certain that the oils aren't going to interact with the varnish because they, they will interact with it and ruin your paintings. You are so right. Like here, I should, if I had the lights on in my studio, like I have the lights on on this table, but I should show you this table over here. It's got 28 sets of coasters. It is very addicting for sure. Uh, how long do I, okay, so are you talking, Karen, are you talking about these coasters specifically, or are you talking about just in general, how long do I let like an acrylic pour on canvas sit there? Because typically, uh, depending on how you mix your paint, my paintings will be dry to the touch within the first 24 to 48 hours. And then if it's a painting, oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, Rod, so for these tiles, like I said, I will, uh, first I'll clean the surface of the tiles very well. Here, I'm trying to rip this tape off and talk at the same time. I'll rip, or, yeah, hold on. Hold on, let me restart my brain real quick. Okay, so for tiles, clean the surface. I'll paint on them. I'll let them dry for about, I'll give them about seven days. I'll let them dry for about seven days with the, before I seal them. <clears throat> and then... After I seal them, I give them another 24 hours to fully cure for that mixture to fully cure before I move on to the resin process. Now with the resin, I will pour the resin on them and then after I pour the resin on them, I give them about 14 days to dry so that, they, that I know that they've dried and then apply another uh, coat of resin and then give them another 14 days to dry and then I can go through the process you're seeing now so these were like a, a month and a half in the making I, I do seal them just because if I don't I've had instances where the resin pulls away from the corners or if there was any residual oil that it would reject the resin there'd be pits in the surface and it pretty much ruins the set. <clears throat> Peggy asks, do I sell my work? Yes, I have a Shopify that I sell all my artwork on. Um, it may be a link in the, in the description below. I'm not sure if it's actually down there, but it, if you go on Shopify and search for JMO painting, it's there. So for paintings, I try not to resin paintings. So for my paintings, it's a lot faster. Um, <clears throat> for my paintings, I'll pour the painting. I'll give them maybe two, three days to dry to the touch. I'll do a test with my baby wipe and wipe the surface. And as long as I can wipe the surface and I don't get color off of the surface, I know it's dry enough that I can clean it. And then I'll clean them with the three solutions we talked about earlier. Uh, and then after I clean them, I'll give them about a day or two to dry from the cleansers and then I'll varnish them. Yeah, silicone will affect it for sure. Karen, my, my most recent video on blooms is, I wanna say it came out a month ago. And I have a playlist that I've just started making on the channel that's gonna be mostly geared towards people starting this journey. Hey Tish, how's it going? <laughs> If y'all don't know who I'm talking to, Tish from the Artist Haven, she's like my go-to girl. If if I'm ever stuck with anything and I need help, like I, she's who I go to because she's super helpful, very knowledgeable when it comes to acrylic pouring. So if you if you're not familiar with who she is, 
I would suggest, you know, clicking on her link, go check out her channel, see if it's something you're into. And if it is, then, you know, there's another great resource for you to learn. You don't use silicone, so do you need to clean them? Uh, you don't need to clean them, no. If you don't use silicone, you don't need to clean them. I would still suggest you give it a decent little wipe because depending on where your drying area is, dust and particulate and stuff might land on the painting while it's drying. So I would clean it for sure before you varnish it. It may be Paula and it, there's so many other factors though too, because it could also be the temperature. Like I do, like my studio is in a garage and it's detached from the house. So, so I mean, right now it's like 50 degrees in here. It's not super cold, but you know, it's, it's cold enough. <laughs> but yeah, so that will definitely affect your drying times and stuff too. So I, I always err on the side of caution, give it a little bit more time than I think I'm going to need. And that way, you know, I end up with a product that I'm happy with. Yeah, it's, it's, it's chilly in here for sure, but this is my little zen place and this is where I go to create things, so I'm happy, I'm grateful for it. Plus if you're handling the painting oils. Yeah, that's true too, Robin, absolutely. Like Just like Robin was talking about, if you're touching them with your hands, even the oils from your fingers can make your, the varnish or resin reject off of the painting and leave pits, so. Robin is absolutely right. So I would suggest definitely cleaning them just to make sure that if you have been handling them, that you get all that oil that might have been on your fingers off. I apologize for all the racket, but I'm moving a garbage can next to me. You can clean and seal them the same day. Lucky. You must be working in a temperature controlled environment. I have a little space heater in here. But yeah, I just take my time with stuff. Yeah, absolutely. You go, Tish. Absolutely correct. Look at me, I'm, st I'm standing here ripping this stuff off, but like you guys can't see what the heck I'm doing because I'm like in my own little world sometimes. What size is the Trevay? Let me see really quick. I think, I wanna say it's like seven inch by eight inch. No, uh, well, yeah, no, it is. It's seven inch by eight inch, essentially. So this is seven inches by eight inches and then these are just the four inch tiles that go with it. I should have made a set for every one of them, but I didn't, unfortunately. Hey, Judy. It's awesome that you're here. Welcome. Oh, man. So this is not the fun part of making coasters. The fun part is me spinning them out and ooh and on about the colors and how they're looking, or when they don't come out good at all and I could just pour right over them again with the same colors and try to achieve something better. Definitely, Sherry, definitely. So how's everybody's holidays been so far? I'm hoping everybody's holidays are going pretty well. My holidays over here are doing, they were doing pretty good. Uh, Karen asks, when I pull the tape off, does it ever pull the resin of the paint off the sides too? Yes, it can. That's why, I, okay, so when I put the tape on the back, let me see if I have one that's not been, yeah, okay. I try my best. Let me see if I can get this to focus really well for you guys. When I put the tape on the back, I'm super meticulous about making sure that it lines up with the edge as good as I can with not much overlap. Because if you have too much overlap, then yeah, when you pull it, it's gonna try to lift the side off too, which will damage. So I even take a straight razor sometimes and just cut along the edge just to make sure it's perfectly even. Use a baby wipe when you wipe down a canvas or tile. Definitely. That's part of my process. 
I need to update that video. That video I made on my how I clean silicone, I put out almost a year ago now. God, it's been that long? Tish, it's been that long. I've been on YouTube for about a year now. What the heck? All right. But yeah, I need to make an updated video of my process of how I clean silicone, and I will. I'm definitely going to do one of those videos. I have a, a video that's not scheduled yet to come out. I have a video that's... Uh, I haven't actually scheduled it to come out yet. It's already uploaded. It's ready to go, but it is everything you need to start acrylic pouring because I've noticed around the holidays there's a whole bunch of people that are starting to take up this process. No, Tish, look look at this craziness. Hold on. I messed one up. I didn't tape it. Where did I put it? Oh, it's right here. Yeah, I didn't. So I'm going to end up calling you later and being like, hey, Tish, um, what do I do with this? Because it's gorgeous. I love it. But it's got these nubs on the back, and I didn't tape it. So... I'm gonna be leaning on you a little bit. Oh yeah, Peggy, completely agree. My whole whole garage here is full of these these paintings. So these two are good. Let's move on. It's called an orbital sander. Don't tell me that, Tish. That sounds painful. That sounds like a whole lot of work that I don't wanna do. But I guess it's better to do that than to heat it up and ruin the resin on the surface. Absolutely, Peggy. There is no virus in your paint room. It's not allowed. Oh, man, where did I put that razor at? Oh, Tish, I don't want to use an orbital sander. That would... Uh, oh, that sounds terrible. I guess if I have to, I have to. That'll be my penance for not putting tape on it to begin with. So, how's everybody's holidays? I hope everybody's holidays are going amazing. If you have a Dremel, it makes it quicker to get the paint off or even the resin. Oh, you just paint the underside? Well, the only problem with me trying to just hide it like that and paint the underside is those drips. They're hard as a rock, so I would have to put uh, this cork backing on the back, but it, it's going to stand up off the tile. Oh, really? 80 grit sandpaper? Done. Or Dremel. I have a Dremel, too, so I'll try both. Well, if you get the, uh, Karen, if you get the unscented baby wipes... A lot of the times they don't contain, like I get some like really cheap dollar store brand stuff and a lot of the time the cheaper stuff, it doesn't contain like those lotions or additives. But the baby wipes in my process are typically the first part. So then I'm going through it with rubbing alcohol after that. And um, rubbing alcohol and Windex after that to clean it. So that'll remove any residue if there was any. Antibacterial wipes. Yeah, I've never tried that. That would work, though. Because all you're doing is removing the excess oil. I wonder if I could just do that to get the tape off without slicing my hand open. When I was in the Boy Scouts, they taught me cut towards the body, right? I don't think that's what they teach you. At all. All right. Yeah, orbital sander sounds cool, or Dremel. That sounds like it would work wonders. It's better than trying to sand it off by hand, which is what I came up with to do at first, so I'm really glad I asked. Or I would have sat here for a few hours probably trying to sand those things off. That would have been fun. I would have called you, though, Tish, and me and you, I would have just been talking to you while I'm sanding. So, you'd have to deal with me and my colorful adjectives. Oh yeah, 
rod, no problem at all. Nope, I put the razor down and I'm just gonna peel it and then the pieces that I need to cut, I'll cut. But I'll make sure that I keep my hands away from it. Yeah, definitely no blood. Just lay a clean terry cloth down, place your coaster's resin side down, and then hold it with one hand, sand with the other. It makes me literally, takes me literally one minute to do it. Oh, perfect. Hey, Leslie Scholes, how you doing? Welcome. It's great seeing you here. I hope everybody's doing fantastic. They really are, though. I try to keep it super clean on my YouTube channel, but like the adjectives come sometimes. So a little secret for those of you that watch my videos often. Those videos that I typically aren't, I'm not talking and it's just a voiceover or <laughs> it's just music and I tried to make it cinematic, kind of. It's because there was a whole lot of colorful adjectives in there. Yeah, that's typically why. Yeah, definitely Robin. I'm probably definitely have to use a mask for that because I'm sure it would be a lot like the mica powders that's probably really fine particles and with the orbital sander those things would be blowing through the air pretty well so when's my next live video um I have one scheduled to go out and it might go out tomorrow I'm trying a thing this holiday season to go post a video each day, but I want it to be something useful, something helpful to, to others. So I'm, I'm trying really hard to come up with some ideas for valuable stuff that people would want. So I have a video that is scheduled. It's not scheduled yet, but it's, it has been uploaded and I could make it live tomorrow, but I want to go, I want a new video every day, if at all possible. So that's my goal for this month. I hope fully will achieve that goal. Oh yeah, absolutely. PPE is very important. Because some, some types of resin have a whole bunch of fumes. So if you're using resin or anything like that, definitely read the, the label, but I mean, it's better safe than sorry. I know, Tish. I hope you do. So life tends to try to get in the way any way it can. But I'm going to try to put out something every day this month for you guys because I want you guys to get all the questions you would ever have answered. Uh, I, I resin in my garage. Are you talking about the wet process, Karen? Because when I'm applying the resin to the coasters in the garage, I have the garage doors open and I move the the tables close to the door so it lets the fumes kind of escape. But yeah, even the stone coat, it says it's not very, um, what is it, VOC? Has no VOCs in it or something like that. It still has a, it still has fumes. Oh, you're gonna be trying a new resin, huh? What? Like a new type of resin that, you, that like is just coming out or a new resin for you? But no, I don't wear a mask when I'm resining in my garage, Karen, because I, I have the doors open and I'm really close to the door. So the, the fumes have somewhere to escape. So typically, no. I need to move this stuff so I can be doing this on screen. Hold on, let me move some of this out of the way. Because y'all are hearing me talk but staring at the same static image. Let me move some of these. There we go. All right. So there's that one. <laughs> Corbin, what are you doing? How you doing, Corbin? Welcome to the live stream. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, each resin is definitely a different, Tish. So I would suggest reading the uh, 
the warning label just to make sure you know what kind of resin you're using if you're not familiar with it. But yeah, if you're going to be working in an enclosed space with any type of resin, I would suggest you use some kind of mask or something to protect your, uh, your lungs because you don't want to be breathing that stuff in. She's awesome. I'm telling you, she's like a, a really great help. So, I, I mean, if you like the stuff on this channel, you'd probably be very likely to enjoy her content too. So, I would say give it, stop by, give it a, give it a look, see, see if it's something you're, you're into. For sure, it's a new to you brand. Oh wow, twenty dollars less per gallon. Well, that's. I'm gonna have to watch that one. Because if I can reduce the cost of the the resins I'm using, then that would be helpful too. Look at you go. Five hundred heat resistant resin by countertop resin, or count yeah. Heck yeah. All right, so those are good. We will move on to, look at these purple ones, goodness. I don't know, I'm addicted to bloom pours again. <laughs> Karen. Well, that's fine. You're here. You're watching. That's awesome. And I'm super grateful for that. Where do you, your, your kid still goes to a standard classroom right now? Oh, Robin, that's okay. Because <sighs> even if you mute me, I'm still here. I'm still here. Yeah, these purple ones came out crazy. They really did. It was just dioxazine purple, this Secura blue, or sky blue, this Secura iridescent blue, and then I used, it's like this little piggy pigment. I'm trying to find it. Oh, there it is. Hold on. I'll grab it. My whole workshop out here is like this giant mess. But then, yeah, this little piggy, um, it doesn't say what color this was. But it's like a pearlescent silver looking color with dioxazine purple from Liquitex Basics. So, I mean, that's, that's the colors. I, Rod, I did not take the course. I don't, I, I probably would learn a lot by taking the course because a lot of this stuff I kind of was just perusing YouTube and taking parts of other people's recipes that I had available and I kind of made my own. I mean, I'm not going to say that nobody else uses the same stuff. They might, but I definitely, I did not take the, the course. And I, this is still something that I might be open to in the future, depending on, you know, how often I want to do these, these blooms, because they just, they're gorgeous. I mean, everything about them I love. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, the younger grandkids are, wow. Here in, well, where I'm at in North Carolina, I think they, I think they shut down the schools, so uh, the kids actually have to do live lessons at home. I think. There. You want the ones that are showing on the top left? Well, see, luckily for you, those aren't even on my store yet. And like I said in the beginning of the live stream, these coasters, are, I typically sell them for like $20 for a set of four. Um, normally, if you get the, the set of four and the Trevay together, for, oh, this is 10, so 
the colors I used for the gold and black ones was this little piggy. The, they only have one little gold color. The bronze brown, chestnut brown, and the silver from this little piggy. So those are the colors. And then it's a black cell activator. And it was just the white house paint as the pillow paint. I'm making myself nervous, Tish. Every time I see myself cutting something, I'm talking about it like I'm watching myself do it from a third person or something. But yeah, I know, I keep on realizing that I'm cutting towards my hand. So then I, I have to take a step back and set it down. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna calm down. <sighs> you don't do blooms, but I got all those colors can make them myself. Yeah, these actually, uh, using the pigments and the colors, even with uh, your typical acrylic pour, they come out awesome, gorgeous. Like my most recent video, it wasn't using these purples, but it was all mica pigments. And the only uh, pouring medium I used was Floetrol. So I mixed them like I was talking about in the beginning of the stream. And then uh, just mixed them with Floetrol and mixed them up well. What colors are these? This one? Karen? Is it the purple ones you're talking about? I like the cork on the back of a treve. I don't think it's too thick. I know it is. It's as thick as the tile. You know, hey, but it'll pr it'll protect the surface, right? You can set that down on the table. It'll be good. It won't scratch anything. <laughs> yeah, Karen, if you're asking about the colors for this, these colors were just um so that was the only actual acrylic paint that I used. I used dioxazine purple was the first layer. The second layer was the dark blue, then the light blue, Secura, and then this iridescent medium, or iridescent pigment here with a black cell activator over top. So that's what this, this one was. Yeah, cutting down like that, Karen? Yeah, definitely. Safety first, right? That's what they tell me. They tell me, safety first. Oh my goodness, I have so many coasters today. This is like the... The bane of my existence is coasters right now. But they're going to come out and they're going to get done. And they're going to make somebody happy to have. So. I Are you talking about the treadmill oil silicone? Because I don't use treadmill oil. I use the Minwax in my cell activator. Oh, the gold. Okay, so with the gold one... I uh, used here. I'll set it down so you have a point of reference. So with the gold one, I used this Secura chestnut brown, and that's what you see kind of out towards the edges, that dark brown, and then layered bronze brown on top of it. And that's that lighter. It's not. It's darker than gold, but it's not as dark as that chestnut brown. And then I used the little piggy gold pigment, and then this iridescent silver looking. Birthday present right there. For sure, Tish. Absolutely. Could be a happy birthday, Merry Christmas, all that stuff. All that stuff. Yeah, so I will add it to the flow trial. One thing I'll say when you're mixing them... Here, I'll do it. I'll just do it on screen real quick. So you guys get an idea when you're mixing. Now, don't tell anybody, but I'm not going to use a mask. But I'm going to be careful. So... So I'm going to take my little cup, right? The two similar colors give you shading in your pour. Yeah, that's absolutely true, Robin. It gives it like a depth. Why am I doing this when I could use this? Okay. So these powders are really fine. Very fine. So you got to be careful. So that's about as much as I would use in a color. And then... I've seen some people try to mix it directly in their paints and with Floetrol, and you'll never get it fully mixed that way because you'll, you'll still end up with lumps no matter how hard you try. Of course, this isn't open. All right. I had to order more because I had went through it all.
Yeah, for my cell activator, I use Minwax wood conditioner. And then for my medium, I use this. For my bloom specifically, I use this Bear 8300 or the Sherwin-Williams Ultra Deep Bass that was in my video. <laughs> Your birthday's December 31st. Aw. You never know. I might. So... I probably put about the same amount of this gloss varnish, and I will typically use a little bit of the Liquitex Basics pouring medium too. It doesn't matter what you mix with it, as long as it's something clear and it's very fluid. So, and you're gonna take it and just slowly fold it within the color, or within the, the varnish. And you're gonna see there's still clumps in it, but you see how it's starting to break down. It's all slowly turning into a liquid. And then you just keep slowly mixing it. Because like I was saying in the beginning, if you breathe this, if you mix it rough, you're gonna splash powder at yourself. So just try to be really super gentle with it. Yes, I absolutely agree, Robin. So I always, when I'm mixing micas, I'll mix a small amount until it's fully incorporated. And then at this point now I can mix whatever my pouring medium is, Floetrol, glue, um, what have you. That's such a beautiful gold, isn't it? I love these mica pigments so much. I'm gonna set that to the side because I'm gonna use that later. Yeah, but if you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to ask anything. So that's the one thing I want to be able to do is to give you guys information. I would love to be able to be that person that if you have a question about acrylic pouring, I can, I can answer it. I should cover it, huh? It's off on the side. It's on, yeah. It, it's you that does that? Aw. Cut away from the body. Something's stuck. My blade's probably dull again. So I'll just fold it. It kind of weakens the edge a little bit so I can break it off. I'm probably gonna finish this coaster up here and then I'm gonna give you guys like this tour, not of this whole studio, but I at least wanna show you the other table that I work on typically. And I wanna show you where, like a uh, kind of a good view of all the coasters that are, that I'm gonna be sitting here all night doing. You need more caffeine? I do too, Tish. Today I just got done with my moving job and came right home and I was like, I wanna live stream, so. Yeah, for sure, Sherry. Like, any questions you guys have, if like if you didn't catch me on the live and you're on the rebroadcast later on or something, just leave a comment. Like, I try my best to answer most of the comments that have, like, questions and stuff. And I want to try to be a resource for you guys. So, because I know, like, starting out can be very intimidating. Not knowing certain things about different types of pores and stuff. And even to this day, there's still some pours I haven't done. So, I mean, everybody's in a different stage in their learning process, and I want to be able to offer you guys some kind of value, you know? All right. This is going to take me for a while. All right. Let me go flip the overhead light on, and I can show you this table full of coasters. There we go. Whew. All right, so yeah, as you can see, this is like, this is my garage. It's, yeah, it works though. All right, so this whole table is full of coasters that I have to finish. It's gonna take me all night, but it's okay. 
So I got the blue and gold, more of like a coffee gold. And some lighter blues, more like ocean theme. If you look up, I think it's called Little Piggy Pigments. If you just Google Little Piggy Pigments, it pops up for you. They're really awesome. Karen, thank you. It's awesome seeing you here. Yeah, I got these like lime green ones that I don't know if I really like that much. But. And then these silver blue. I was kind of, can you tell I was going crazy with that gold color? Because it's like three or four sets now you've seen with that gold in it. And then these blues with the golds. And then you're going to get into more like traditional acrylic pour. Yeah, the, the lime green ones did have a hint of blue in them, Robin. There's a very faint blue in the center. And then you're getting into some of my more abstract kind of flip cup acrylic pours here. And then, of course, more blooms. More abstract here, too. So, yeah. Oh, there you go, Tish. That's the link right there. Fluid Art Co. This Little Piggy. So. Thank you for coming to the live stream. It was great having you here. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below because I would love to interact with you there if you're here in the rebroadcast. And if you're here live right now, thank you so much for your support. I can never really speak to the amount of gratitude that I have for all of you, each and every one of you. And as always, go out there and create your own happiness today, guys. Have a great day.